Hi everyone, I am Mrs. Crowley and this is your video to go through your syllabus for your class Advanced Algebra. I will be providing you with an electronic copy of the syllabus that you can reference as we go through it. Um, but just take some time to watch this video, answer the questions that are embedded throughout. And then at the end, I'm going to request a signature um, from you, just declaring that you understood and read the syllabus. And for a signature, I just need you to type your name at the last question. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you are at Marshwood High School taking advanced algebra. I am Mrs. Crowley. Those of you guys who will be coming to my room, we are in E204, and hopefully by now you know what my email address is. Again, most of our communication is going to be happening through Google Classroom, so if you have not yet connected onto our Google Classroom, you want to make sure you do that. And for when you are at home, the easiest way and fastest way that you will be able to get in contact with me is through the Remind app, so you want to make sure that you get yourself access to that. So here's our introduction and philosophy. All high school math courses have many goals, but there are three that are basic to a superior course. One, students learn the facts, formulas, and principles that compass the curriculum. Students understand the basic concepts underlying the facts, formulas, and principles, and students develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills to use in everyday life. In advanced algebra, Pretty much we're going to be covering topics that you were taught last year in Algebra 2, with an exception of a few more new things. Um, but what we're going to be doing with those same topics is we're going to be advancing our algebra and doing harder problems with those common topics. So a lot of times you're going to be thinking, huh, we did this last year, and yeah, you did do this last year, but we're going to be upping our game and making things a little bit more complicated. Here are the supplies that I am requesting that you have with you every day to class. If you are coming in school or even if you're at home, make sure your laptop is charged. If you're coming into school, make sure you bring your laptop charger with you. I know that some of you guys are period one, some of you guys are period three, period one. Hopefully your, your laptop is charged when you get here, but by period three, maybe your laptop has died. So you want to make sure you do have a charger with you in case you need to charge up. I also am asking that you bring some type of headset, earbuds, headphones, whatever it is, in case we do do something in class that I want you to listen to independently, then we don't have everybody's sound going on at once. Please have a pencil on hand to work through any math problems. If you do need to use a pen, make sure it's blue or black inked, um, but we do make mistakes and it's much easier to erase pencil than it is to erase pen. Have paper with you on hand. Scrap paper is an excellent way to just jot down practice problems. Um, so just make sure you have lots and lots of paper, whether it's a notebook or just loose leaf paper, have some paper with you. You are also gonna to need to have access to your textbook. We do have a PDF version of our textbook that a TA actually scanned for us last year. Um, so you don't necessarily need a hard copy of the textbook. If you do want a hard copy of the textbook, you need to let me know as soon as possible uh, so that I can get you access to getting it, especially those of you guys who are fully remote. Um, just a quick disclaimer about the PDF version of our textbook. Some of the pages are upside down, so you might have to do some flip-flopping of the pages. It was a previously used textbook, so there probably is some writing in there and some problems circled, so just try to ignore any notation that has been put in there. You are gonna need a calculator for this class. I highly recommend that you have a TI-83 or higher. We do have TI-84s here at the school that are welcome to be signed out. Um, so if you do want to have a graphing calculator on you and you don't currently own one, please let me know so I can get you one signed out to you. Um, you can get through this class without a graphing calculator, but I'm gonna be kind of showing you some tricks, some fancy tricks that our calculator can do for you, which might make your life a little bit easier. 
So now this is the big part, our class expectations, expectations and rules. And a lot of this has to pertain to those students who will be in class, so those hybrid students. When you are in class, you need to make sure that you are wearing a mask at all time. You must sanitize your hands upon entering and leaving the room. Uh, this actually changed. Number three, we're only wiping down our desks with the wet wipe at the end of class. In the beginning of class, if your desk appears to be wet, then you can get a paper towel and dry it. Um, but only at the end of class is when we're going to go to actually clean with the wet wipe on our desks. And I did show demonstrations of that, so hopefully you got that down. Remember the circulation of air has significantly increased, so our windows will be open. This will cause warmer rooms in the fall and colder rooms in the winter, so please dress appropriately. Desks must remain in the area marked on the floor. Ideally, your backpack should be placed on the back of your chair. If it won't stay on the back of your chair, then place it on the floor next to your desk. So if you think about it, those germs will probably be settling down on the floor. So you probably don't want to be resting too much of your stuff on the floor. Cell phones are to be kept in your backpacks unless they are in use by class. During class, students should use the bathrooms located upstairs in the E and D pod. Only one student may sign out at a time. I'm not going to have an actual sign out book. Um, so just kind of be aware of the people in the room. And if someone's out, wait your turn before you exit to go use the restroom. Students who will be present in the classroom should bring the following items. We already discussed this, a notebook, your own paper, calculator, a fully charged laptop, earbuds, headphones, and a pencil. I would also suggest bringing your own bottle of hand sanitizer to keep in person throughout the day, um, just because it might be easier to just quickly do that type of hand sanitizing than trying to walk over to the ones that are in the classroom. Respect and show courtesy to all people. This includes listening when others speak, using appropriate language, and keeping all hands and feet to yourself. Maintain a distance of six feet from all persons located in the classrooms and in the hallways. Each classroom will be dismissed at an announced time, so I'm going to ask that you remain by your seat until the dismissal. Only water will be allowed in the classrooms. Please make sure that all bottles get placed in the appropriate trash receptacle. And stay fully engaged in class. Everyone is expected to participate. Remember, doing mathematics is seeking to understand and trying to solve problems, not simply follow recipes. So whether you are in class or at home, make sure that you are actively engaged during that time period of either period one or period three. Um, so I think that's gonna be the easiest way to keep yourself organized and keep yourself on track with the material that we're working on. Any other rules and regulations printed in the school handbook also apply. Consequences are the, at the discretion of the teacher and will be promptly taken care of. So how are you gonna be great at this year? Your average is gonna be based on points, earned out of points available. Your quarter's grade is calculated from your understanding of the curriculum, curriculum not how much effort it takes to get there. So participation in classwork, you're gonna get specific assignments and a grade for that somewhere between the 5 to 25 point range. Homework will be worth somewhere around 5 to 25 points, depending on the assignment. We're going to be having quite often progress, progress check quizzes, and those will be around 10 to 25 points. And then your summative assessments will be somewhere between 50 to 100 points. So progress check quizzes are going to be more of shorter quiz, quizzes that could just happen in the period, and they'll cover probably just one section. Your summative assessments, those are going to be more like your quizzes and your tests. They're going to be given at the end of a few sections or at the end of a unit. Now let's discuss homework. Homework is an essential part of this course. Math should be learned through practice, so one of your best tools for learning the material is through homework. Homework will be assigned regular, regularly. Homework may consist of problems from the text, or it could be a worksheet and or it could be taking notes from a video lecture. You're highly encouraged to collaborate virtually with your peers. Talking through problems with your classmates is a great way to solidify your understanding of the material. 
However, keep in mind that your solutions must be your own. Copying answers from a peer, Slater, Photomath, or any other internet aid is not appropriate. If discovered, the homework assignment will be marked as a zero and further disciplinary action may occur. Minimum requirements for homework submission. Homework that does not meet the minimum requirements receives a zero credit and must be redone within one day to earn full credit. Please make sure that your homework is completed in pencil or blue black inked pen. Make sure that you show all your work. Just writing down an answer is not acceptable. Circle your answer so I know exactly what it is that I'm looking for and label your answer when appropriate. You should attempt every problem. If you cannot answer a problem or a set of similar problems, you should copy the problems down onto your piece of paper and then make whatever notes possible about what you don't understand. That way I know that you tried and I can see where you are stuck so I can help you get unstuck. Just leaving the paper blank and saying, I don't know what I'm doing is not adequate. Late makeup work. Due dates will be provided for every assignment. Unless otherwise stated, assignments are due on those days. However, I do recognize that sometimes life happens. In these instances, please reach out to me to specifically discuss the possibility of an extension of a specific assignment. Work will not be accepted late and will, continue, and will be counted as a zero grade. Please keep in mind that it may still be useful to complete the assignment for your own learning pro process. Extra help. Although students are not able to stay after school this year, we can connect in the following ways. We can set up an email and discuss a problem through that. Uh, we can do a scheduled Google Hangout or maybe even just texting back through the Remind app. Resources and reminders. Google Classroom is going to be the primary source for assignments, announcements, and assessments. Assignments will be distributed, submitted, assessed, and returned primarily via the classroom. It is your responsibility to find out what you missed if you were absent. You should check Google Classroom and IC, as well as check in with three classmates before emailing me regarding what you missed. Come to class on time, both in-house and virtually, and be prepared. Be an active participant in your own learning. Do your work. So when you guys are at home and you are checking in with us through Google Hangouts, here are the norms that I expect. So while virtual learning was completed this past spring, there are new expectations of students as we continue to learn from home. Here are the remote norms that are expected. You are expected to log on to the Google Hangout or Zoom session on time at the start of every class. When you log into a Google Hangout, session video should be, sorry, when you log into a Google Hangout session, your video should be turned on. Mute your microphone unless otherwise directed by the teacher. Only students should be on the screen. I know it might be hard if you have cats and might be crawling all over the place, but we don't need to be sitting there with our dog. We don't need to be sitting there with our brother. So just try to find a quiet spot for just you to be active in your learning. When you have a question, please post it in the group chat. So go ahead and plop it into the group chat if something quickly comes up and then we can discuss that um, when the time is appropriate. If you need to exit the room at any point while you're sitting at home, what I would like you to do is to type the words hall pass in the group chat so that the teacher is aware that you are not present. Type returned once you have returned, because I know that sometimes potty breaks must happen even when you're at home. The remote world is your classroom. Appropriate behavior, so that stress and language is expected in both in school and in virtual school. And please do not take any screenshots or videos of members of the class. That's just being very disrespectful. At this point, that concludes our reading of the syllabus. So what I would like you to do is for this last question, I want you to do your signature, which is really just typing your name, saying that I have read the following syllabus and understand all topics that were addressed. 
If there was a question about a specific topic, I asked the teacher for clarification. So if there's something about anything that we just discussed, please send me an email to ask for clarification about anything that you have questions about. Thank you. This concludes the video.